the Sexual Harassment Act. Section 4. Duty of employer and person in charge of institution to institute policy statement. Subsection 1. Every employer, A, shall, in relation to the business or undertaking of the employer, issue a policy statement in writing concerning the prevention of sexual harassment in the business or undertaking and the protection of the workers in the business or undertaking from sexual harassment. So this now means that any workplace or school needs to have that policy statement made and visible to those who work there as well as other persons present. We continue. And B shall take such steps as are reasonably required to bring the policy statement mentioned in paragraph A to the attention of the workers employed by the employer. So it would have to be posted in the offices at the workplace. Hmm. Two, every person in charge of an institution A shall in relation to that institution issue a policy statement concerning the prevention of sexual harassment at the institution and the protection of the students, residents, wards, inmates, patients, or members, as the case may be, of that institution from sexual harassment, and B shall take such steps as are reasonably required to bring the policy statement mentioned in paragraph A to the attention of the students, residents, wards, inmates, patients, or members, as the case may be, of that institution. So the policy statement would have to be published to both workers, teachers, and, and other workers, as well as students or inmates. Three, the policy statement required under this section shall be in accordance with the sexual offense, the sexual harassment framework document set out in the first schedule and shall include the following. All right. So we have these should be included in the policy statement. A definition of sexual harassment which is consistent with the provisions of this act. That's A. B. A statement to the effect that workers, clients, students, residents, wards, inmates, patients, or members, as the case may be, are at or off that institution, are entitled to an environment that is free of sexual harassment. C. A statement to that effect that disciplinary measures, as are appropriate, shall be taken against any person under the direction of the employer or the person in charge of the institution who subjects any worker, client, student, resident, ward, inmate, patient, or member, as the case may be, to sexual harassment, and that due process shall be exercised in this regard. So the, the statement must define what sexual harassment is. It must state that those in the institution are entitled to an environment free of sexual harassment. And it must state that disciplinary measures, as are appropriate, shall be taken against any person who commits an act of sexual harassment. Okay. D. The internal mechanisms and procedures 
that are available to a worker, client, student, resident, ward, inmate, a patient, or a member, as the case may be, for the making of any complaint relating to sexual harassment and resolution and settlement of the complaint. Oh, so the internal mechanisms, the disciplinary measures to be taken within the institution should be there. E, a statement explaining the disciplinary measures that may be taken in respect of sexual harassment should have a statement to the effect that the employer or person in charge of the institution shall not disclose any information relating to the complaint to the complainant or the circumstances of a complaint to any person except where the disclosure is necessary for the purpose of investigating the complaint or taking disciplinary action in relation to the complaint. All right. So, the complaint will not be published to other persons unless such publication will be necessary for investigation. All right. G, a statement informing the workers Client, student, resident, ward, inmate, patient, or members, or as the case may be, of their right to seek redress from the tribunal under this act. And H, subject to section 27, subsection 5, a statement to the effect that a complainant shall exhaust all internal mechanisms and procedures that are available to the complaint before making a complaint to the tribunal okay so if they try everything within the institution and everything fails then they complain to the tribunal okay for subsection 4 within 12 months from the date of commencement of this act every employer and person in charge of an institution shall ensure that the policy statement required under this section is prepared and shall take such steps as are reasonably required to bring the policy to the attention of each worker, client, student, resident, ward, inmate, patient, or member as the case may be. So, you have one year within which to do that. Five, subsection five. An employer or a person in charge of an institution who discloses any information relating to a complaint or the circumstances of a complaint in contravention of subsection 3F. What does subsection 3F say? That the complaint shall not no one shall disclose any information relating to the complaint or the circumstances of a complaint to any person except where the disclosure is necessary for investigation. Okay, we continue. An employer or a person in charge of an institution who discloses any information relating to the complaint of or the circumstances of a complaint in contravention of subsection 3F shall be liable for such disclosure and a complaint complainant who is aggrieved by such disclosure may make a complaint in relation in respect thereof to the tribunal the minister may by order amend the first schedule <laughs> 